29th of 2019. The meeting is being held in order to the agenda for the regular monthly board meeting and will be held up, which will be held on Wednesday, January 16, 2019 at 7 p.m. and to take any action that is coming before the board. All meetings have been advertised to permit legislative action as necessary. And at this point, you should have picked up two agendas when you came in tonight, one for the meet and discuss, and one had a third line on it said voting. There are two items that need to be voted on. We'll be doing the voting portion first, then going into the regular meet and discuss. So we'll proceed with the voting portion of the meeting at this point. Could I ask everyone to please rise for the fight? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public videotaping. The purpose of videotaping a meeting is for the public information. The opinions expressed by any member of the public do not necessarily reflect the view or opinion of the Ambridge Area School District Board of School Directors and are solely that of the speaker. The Ambridge Area School District Board of School Directors hereby expressly disclaims any and all responsibility or liability for any false, defamatory, or slanderous statements expressed by the speaker. Any unauthorized rebroadcasting of any video, audio, or still image of the video recording of this meeting is strictly forbidden without the written permission of the Ambridge Area School District Board of School Directors. May I have a roll call, please? Mrs. Fisher? Here. Mrs. Kehoe? Here. Mr. Kowal? Here. Mrs. Locker? Here. Mrs. Meyer? Here. Ms. Pettigo? Here. Mr. Sass? Here. Mr. Weir? Mr. Angus? Here. Eight members present. Thank you. Sunshine Law, please. Section 708 of the Sunshine Law permits agencies to hold executive sessions to discuss employment and personnel matters, labor relations and arbitration matters, purchase or lease of real estate up to the time an option or agreement is obtained, litigation or potential litigation, legal matters subject to attorney-client privilege, and other agency business which if discussed in public would violate lawful privilege or would violate confidentiality laws. The Board of School Directors held an executive session on Wednesday, January 9, 2019 to discuss employment and personnel matters, salary schedule, and labor relations. Thank you. Are there any amendments to the voting agenda this evening? Hearing none, may I ask for a motion to approve the agenda for the voting meeting? Definitely. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Milan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Presentations will be done during the regular meeting and discuss portion of the meeting. Uh, we'll move forward now for public comment. At this time, district residents may come forward to comment on the agenda items only. Each person must state their first and last name and address prior to speaking. Each resident will be allowed three minutes and can speak only once. This period for public comment prior to the standing committee reports will be limited to one half hour. Although not required, board members desiring to address questions or concerns may do so after the resident's comment or question or at the conclusion of the committee reports. There will still be an opportunity for residents to comment on any business relevant to the Ambridge Area School District under old and new business at the end of the meeting. Is there anyone who wishes to comment on either of the two voting items on the agenda this evening? Hearing nothing, then um, Mrs. Walker, personnel, please. Yes, I move for the adoption of items one and two under the personnel department. I have a motion for items one and two under personnel. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Kowal. Is there any discussion on items one and two? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Kehoe? Yes. Mr. Kowal? Yes. Mrs. Locker? Yes. Mrs. Milan? Yes. Mrs. Pettigo? Yes. Mr. Sass? Yes. Mr. Angus? Yes. Motion carries. The superintendent's report will hold for the next half portion of the regular meeting. Anything from the solicitor this evening? Um, I would just add that also in the executive session, the board considered legal matters subject to attorney client privilege. Thank you. Uh, Old and new business, it is now time for old and new business. Any district resident who desires to comment on any business relevant to the Ambridge Area School District should do so now and come forward. Each person must state their first and last name and address prior to speaking. Each person will <coughs> be allowed three minutes and can speak only once. So the floor is now open for any discussion on any item in the school district. Megan River. I want to talk about the middle school and the safety concerns that are going on at the middle school. Um, everybody knows about the incident that the students <coughs> posted on social media. I know you guys addressed it, sent out the emails. We appreciate that. I also know that on Wednesday we did the backpack checks, which 
we also appreciate it. The concern was not Wednesday, it was the concern is, what about tomorrow? What about the next day? What about next month? Unfortunately, now the student put it out there. You have to worry about what other students think, copycats, whatever. I understand there was an incident on Friday where a student brought a knife to school. There were no checks on Friday, but it apparently fell out of the backpack, and it was found that student was suspended. It's supposed to be weapons violation, I'm assuming, just given that there was a knife. Um, our kids are nervous. Our kids are talking about it. That student's out of school on suspension now, I'm assuming, for 10 days based on the policies here. And now I understand that this morning, he got on a bus, went into the building, and was walking around the building this morning until somebody noticed him. So how safe and secure is that building? I appreciate the video cameras. However, I feel video cameras are only going to tell you who did it. A lot of us parents feel that we need a metal detector, a wand. I have no problem with my son going through and getting checked every day. And if any parent here has an issue with that, then what are you trying to hide? Something needs to be done, something needs to be addressed. And I think what makes a good school district is how the board works with your parents. I'd like to know, have you talked with the students? The students are concerned. They're talking to their parents, and the parents are talking. What does the economy police recommend? I'd like to hear what the economy police are recommending. Since the beginning of the school, there's been incident after incident after incident there. And I would like to see it nipped in the bud. Our kids can't learn if there's this distraction, that distraction. And everybody thinks already we have this horrible school district. We're not the worst school district out there. We're not the best school district out there. Every school district has problems. It's how you address those problems and how we're proactive. I think we've had our warning call. It's time now. Let's start talking. I want answers today. I'm sorry. I want to know that when I send my son to school, and I'm not an anxious parent at all. You can ask anybody. But when I send him to school, I want to know that he is safe and secured in that building. I know there's nothing 100% guaranteed. However, I do feel that a metal detector would least provide our kids feeling a little bit 80% better, 85%, maybe parents feeling 85% better. You know, it's something we need to talk about and address these issues. And that's why I'm here. And unfortunately, I feel like I'm the only one that stands up because I'm not afraid. You're always going to know where I'm coming from. You're going to hear the good and the bad from me. And you know that. Some of you have been on the board. I've come. I spoke out good things and bad things. So let's talk about it. Let's do something. Let's start. I would like to see a parent board. Let's have a parent board with the district and meet with the police and discuss safety. It's a concern. Can somebody please talk and let us know what you're thinking, what you're doing? A metal detector in the works? Can we have checks every day? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm going, to, when we get into the next part of the meeting, I'm going to do a presentation. I may be able to answer some of those questions at that time. I, uh, there's a lot of it I can address. Okay. Right. I mean, my concern is we got these video cameras. How effective were those video cameras today with this kid getting on a bus and walking in there and being around that building? That's a concern. And if kids are letting their parents know, it's a concern. And I don't know, I don't want to know all the details. I just, let's address it. Let's start talking. Let's make this district better. Let's, because parents are talking already about pulling their kids out and sending them other places. You just got how many students back from Baden Academy. Those parents are like, oh my gosh, what did I do now? So let's talk. Sorry, thank you. Thank you, Susan. We'll address some of that coming up in the middle school presentation in the next meeting. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is there anyone else who wants to comment on it? Please. Hi, my name is Mason Osborne. I'm here to speak on behalf of the Ambridge football team for Coach George to remain. Um, I don't mean any offense to any of the people inside this room, but no one truly knows what happens or goes on in that locker room. No one truly knows what we've gone through the past three years. Uh, and that uh, when you guys opened up the job and said, we want someone to be there for the kids, Coach George has been nothing but there for us. Um, with the graduating kids, there's been tons of students who's texted him very personal messages saying how he's always been there for us. He always has our backs, whether it's in the classroom or if it's on the field, even outside that trying to get us higher education with colleges. He's n always been nothing but there for us. Besides being a head coach, he's not only a head coach, he's a mentor to me and to other kids on this team. And I just feel that we shouldn't be pushing him out the door. We should be welcoming him in. He took in a program that had 11 transfers my freshman year. 
how is he supposed to run a team when we have 11 transfers and all 11 of those guys were juniors and seniors? It's not like they were freshmen and sophomores. They were upperclassmen. And I know you guys are looking at it as wins and losses, but the game of football is more than wins and losses. He has taught me more lessons on the field and being as my coach and a mentor than I've learned in the classroom. And I think that means more to me than wins and losses. It sucks losing every game, I'm not going to lie. You didn't lose every game. We won one, finally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate finally we won one, but it, it sucks. But we have a lot of things going for us. And our, lo our locker room is very optimistic. We're not looking for change. We, we're happy with what we have. And we're very excited for the new upcoming year. And we want to get that going with Coach George as our head coach. Thank you. Anyone else have anything to address? Yes. Yeah. My name is Kathy Andrews. I'm from Economy Borough. I'm the coordinator of the Bridger Readers Volunteer Program, and I um, <clears throat> have been coming to school board meetings for the last seven years on a regularly frequent uh, basis. I wanted to talk tonight about the upcoming gun bashes being held by the Booster Club, where there are 20 different weapons, some of which are high-powered, that are being raffled off to support the football and cheerleading squad. This is a definite connection to the school district, whether or not there is legal authority over the booster club. The football players and cheerleaders are all Ambridge students. One important responsibility of the board is to ensure the, shape, the safety of its students. Therefore, I think this gun bash should be stopped. Since the district's attorney cannot find a legal way to do this, I feel that the board should make it clear to the entire community that this event is being held against the better judgment of the board. An email blast sent out only to parents of registered students that leaves most of the community uninformed about this. I feel that the board should send to the Brewster Club for holding this type of fundraiser. Going one step further, maybe the board could consider uh, preventing the football team and the cheerleading squad from accepting the funds from this raffle. Other districts have policies preventing this. I would like to request the board to adopt a policy for the future where they were stripped outside groups from using things such as when they're raising funds for events and activities to um, prohibit them from using things such as alcohol, drugs, tobacco, and firearms. In support of this idea, I brought along a list of 93 ways to hold fundraisers. It's from a website that is continuously adding new suggestions. More weapons on the streets of Ambridge increases the chances that some will we'll walk into a school building and then we know what will happen. We need to ask, is money for sports more important than the safety of our students and our community? Mike Stulak, I'm uh, I'd like to follow up a little bit on the gun bash as well. My question is, I know the school board has its hands tied a little bit legally because you're dealing with a 501c3. My question is, does that belong to the gun club or the boosters club? Who has that? I'm sorry, could, you're, yeah. could you restate Who has the 503c <coughs> funding program or permit, whatever you call it. Is it, is it the gun club? You mean or the is sports it the boost club? The sports boost club. And I'm, 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 I'm not certain. Wait, I'm not certain why it's that. The boosters have. Uh, yeah. Boosters yeah. Have. <coughs> but <laughs> typically, <coughs> the booster organization okay. will be. So the, the boosters then went to the gun club to have this gun bash, correct? Well, we don't, I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't know. No, but I, I can so. answer that because okay. I am the president of that booster. Okay. And yes, we did. And they sponsored us. So they, they there is you. no child, no child at all permitted to handle the tickets. They are not permitted to be there. We have off-duty cops so to be there. So yes, now. we have a 501C that we paid for ourselves. Right. So the boosters has, came to you to do a fundraiser? Uh, yes, no, I the am the boosters. So you are the boosters. I am the boosters. So you have your okay. comment right, when he's done with his please. I was just he's answering his question. Right yes. So my next question is, when the money's all wrapped up together, is the money given to the boosters? Is it split between the boosters and the gun club? 
Does the money go from the boosters into the general fund with the business manager? The booster money never goes That's or what enters I our, our Okay, so in essence, the boosters club has no official capacity for dealings with this school board or the school. They're outside of it. That's correct. Okay? So they raise the money. Do you think as a school board, you can say, I don't want your money? We, we don't, don't get it. Take get we money. don't take yes. any of it. But you don't want to participate. Having your student, they, they don't control your football players, they don't control your cheerleaders, they don't control the basketball team, they only control where the money goes. Do you control those players? Do you control those basketball, football, cheerleaders? Is it your responsibility as to what can be done with those students? Because you could, in essence, say, well, the Boosters Club, we got $3,000. Let's take all the senior football players up to the gun range and shoot uh, automatic weapons. They could do it. They're allowed to do it. So you've got to make sure that you're protecting your students. They can do anything they want with their money. I think you have, and you can check into the power to whether to accept that money or not accept that money. And the last thing I'll bring up is two things. You need to make the public aware of what's going on, not just through email blasts. You need to send letters. You need to put information in newspapers. You need to contact newspapers, TVs. You've got to get as many uh, editorials as possible. Because you all have done a great job over the last year increasing the educational opportunities here and, and bringing up the image of this school district. And now it's going to get pulled down because of a gun bash. It's going to get pulled down. So you better start getting information out to the general public, not just students, because it affects everybody. Because someone that buys a ticket that wins a gun but can't go through a background check gets 80% of the cost of that gun. So if you have a $500 gun, you can't get a background check. You get 400 bucks in your pocket. Now, what the hell do you think is going to happen with that 400 bucks? Nobody knows. Is it buy another gun? Let's go down to the Sunoco station and see if we can find a gun. That's what you have to look at. You have to try to control the situation, and you have to disallow this type of money coming in to this district. You can stop it. That's it. Thank you. Your turn, ma'am. All I'm saying is they did Wait, sponsor Judy Polachek, Ambridge. Say it again, please. Judy Polachek from Ambridge. The gun bash was sponsored by the Ambridge Sportsman's Club. There will Speak be, up, please. There will be a guy there that day with a machine to check a background check. No one will walk out of there with a gun if you do not pass that background check. No one. They'll walk out with money. You will not walk out with money either. Read your ad. You have to go back to big bucks and pick up the money. <laughs> so they don't get it there. They get it somewhere else. Okay. What happens when they walk out of, of our control? That ain't our control. And the guns go out without your control. Why are you having a gun bash? In because the anyway, community would when, not support us and have give us donations. Nine hundred other ways and of we raising tried funds. We tried them. We had eight different fundraisers this year. Maybe you do address eight. the board, not the. Board. Oh well, they had me looking that way. I'm not sure which way I'm supposed to be looking here. We had eight different fundraisers this year, and none of them worked. So when Ambridge Sportsman's Club approached us and said, hey, we'll help you out, this is what you got to do, and we said, well, we don't want the kids selling tickets. Not one kid has seen a ticket. None. Not one. It has all been handled by the parents and an adult. And no one under the age of 18 will get in there. We already got a machine to swipe a license. It has already been said you have to have photo ID. So no one will be in there without that. Most of the tickets, I will tell you, have been sold to cops and the Beaver County Jail. That's where most of our tickets have won. No, and we had no idea that the community felt about this. No one contacted us. We had already been selling these tickets for two months before somebody said this. I'm not sure how you expected us to go back after two months and 300 and some tickets later and get money back. And honestly, if you can tell me now how to do it, I'll cancel it. If anybody wants to walk around and get 500 people 
and give them their money back. I'll give you the money, I'll give you the tickets, and you can do it. Can I ask you where the money is going to be spent? There is a lot of behind the scenes things that Yens don't see with football players that we have to pay for. Every time them football players get on a bus to go away to an away game, we buy them hoagies, we buy them drinks, we buy them um, chips. Every time they have a home game, we feed them downstairs in the cafeteria, we buy them food for that. They have two weeks of camp, we have to supply a lunch for them every single day That for those two weeks. We have to supply things like popsicles so that the boys, when they're out on the field, it's 90 degrees, they're sweating to death. Popsicles are expensive. When you start buying hundreds and hundreds of popsicles and you're going through three, nine, three and 400 a week, they get expensive. There's a lot of boys that will stay after school to go weightlifting. You can't imagine how much peanut butter and jelly and bread that we have went through. Let alone, that's for the boys. Now we got the cheerleaders that we have to do too. They have a week at camp, they go to the games, they have home games, we have to buy all them food and that too. Have you ever provided? Some boys can't afford cleats, some boys can't afford socks, some boys, that's what we do. We buy that for them so that they can play the game. Have, have you submitted a budget to the school board and a treasurer's report to the school board of how all this money is being raised and funneled and channeled? I agree. If that's the type of thing you're doing, I don't have a problem with that. But I don't know that. I guarantee you probably 90% of the people in this room Everyone has been invited to our booster meeting. Everyone. We have put that out there multiple, multiple times. Please come and, and see what this is all about. Have you filed the 501c3 yes. with the state? Yes. When was the most recent one? June of 2018. So we can access that? Yes, you can. Okay. Absolutely. Just looking, the things that you described, I have absolutely no problem. Okay, I can just put in, in okay. three minutes. All right. Up. all right, I'm sorry. Yep, it's all right. Anyone sorry. else have anything else? Yes, go right ahead. I just. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. She's coming okay. there. Sorry. 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 My name's Brenda for Tolapak. I'm from Econ Rivera also. Um, I want to just applaud Megan for everything she said about the middle school because that was one of the reasons I was here tonight. I also think that metal detectors are the place we need to go. Uh, I know they're not going to stop everything from happening, but it's certainly a step in the right direction, in my opinion. Um, the second reason I'm here tonight is because I have a student at the high school, the middle school, and a fourth grader at Economy. And the reason I'm here tonight, too, is I want to bring up what's going on at Economy, and I don't know if many parents or if you are aware. Um, my daughter in fourth grade, there's a lot of IEP students that have been um, fighting. Um, there was break before break, two kids during recess attacked each other in the classroom. My daughter and the other students got up against the cubbies out of the way. Um, her teacher, Mrs. Malatesta, yelled to her to go get another teacher who then got more help. Uh, it took lots of adults to get these two kids out of the room. My daughter came back home and she said, Mom, my hand's still shaking. I'm so scared. So she was really upset about it. Um, these kids, they are being disciplined. I'm not here to bash the teachers or Mrs. Glitzis because I know they're doing what they can to control this. I'm a teacher as well, so I know both ends of it. But on the parent end of it, my daughter's coming home telling me the F word's been said. I hope there's no little kids in here, but the word faggot's been used. Um, the, the kids have been calling the teacher crackhead during math. All these things are happening. All these adults are in the room. There's Mrs. Blitzis, like five or six other adults in the room. And all this is continuing, and I know these kids have IEPs, they're being disciplined, but it's not enough. And I'm really disgusted by the fact that when I come home, I have to say to her, what did you hear today that we can talk to you about and explain? Uh, the other day she came home, she had a tally, a piece of paper. She was tallying the F word, how many times she heard it. And it was 10 times. So I explained to her that that's not what she should be doing during school hours, of course, but um, the fact that that's what she's doing is just very disturbing. And so I just want to know when enough is enough and what's going to be done about this because it's just ridiculous that she's doing this. In fourth grade, not in fourth And I teach fourth grade, so I'm like, as a teacher, I can't even imagine dealing with that. So, you know, I feel bad for the teachers dealing with it, Mrs. Glitzis, but something needs done because, I mean, these kids need help, and my daughter and the rest of the kids <coughs> should be suffering all these disruptions. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. My name is Lisa Patton. I'm from Economy. I wanted to say something because I don't want you to feel that a majority of the people that are here are uh, against the gun bash. I'm here because of the safety of my daughter at the middle school. Um, the, the whole incident on the social media, and I know you guys addressed it, she did not want to go to school on Wednesday the second. She was afraid. And I, I assured her, this is going to be the safest day that you could go. They are going and checking backpacks. This is the safest day you could go. She did not want to go. Do you know that child did not sleep Wednesday night? She was up all night long. She kept having nightmares every time she fell asleep. And I asked her, what are you having your nightmares about? I'm having nightmares about the knife and the kid, Mom. What? And Megan had said that. Who is to say that it doesn't put the issue into somebody else's mind? So I'm here in support of, and I can't wait, Dr. Wilder, to hear what you have for your plan. But I'm here in support of the safety of hopefully getting metal detectors or whatever to um, keep our kids safe. That's why, I that's why I'm here tonight. But then off of what Brenda just said, my daughter came home yesterday on the aspect of kids with being disruptive. She was in her social studies class. The teacher wasn't there. A kid got kicked out of the class because he was being so disruptive. And he stood there outside of the door, banging on the door, staring through the glass, jiggling the door handle the whole time. She's right next to the door. She could not pay attention. So she's being disruptive, so she now can't learn. So. That's not my main thing. Like I said, it's the safety, but I just wanted to tag off of what Brenda had said too. So unfortunately, it seems like it's at all, you know, it's out of economy, and then I know my daughter's saying that. My son, he's in second grade. He's good. <laughs> We're good there. All right. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm here to talk about the gun bash again. Um, I'm a classroom teacher. I've spent 27 years in the What is your name? I'm sorry, Sheila Dutilla. I spent 27 years in the classroom in the neighboring school district, and I've taught long enough to experience unlocked front doors, and the only, fire, the only drill we ever had was a fire drill. Now, because of the very real threat of school shootings, I have a badge and a code to get in my door. I have to carry a key with me at all times to lock the door from the inside in case we have an intruder. I, every day I keep an eye out for the emergency light in the hallway that would indicate that somebody in the office hit the panic switch. We have trapped vestibules so people can't get in, people with guns. We spend many, many man hours every year developing and refining these safety procedures for emergencies. And sadly, every once in a while, I sit with my 12-year-olds on the floor, out of the side of the door, so that I can't be spotted, my kids can't be spotted by a gunman. And all I can do is smile reassuringly into those faces while the administrator rattles the door to make sure that I have it locked. When the boosters make a decision to sell AR-15s, not just hunting rifles, and not just one AR-15, multiple assault-style rifles, it undermines all the steps schools and teachers across the state have taken to keep our kids safe. The guns on this list aren't just a group of hunting rifles. The Caltech Sub-2000 is designed to be the most convenient 9mm Ford caliber rifle available. And what do they mean by convenient? It can be folded into the size of a textbook, 16 by 7, fits great into a backpack. And we're talking about metal detectors. By raffling off these deadly weapons, we're telling our kids that their safety is not our utmost concern. We're sending the message that it's okay to make money off the lives of kids who've been slaughtered in their classrooms over the past two decades. Washington Post had statistics that over 220,000 kids in 225 schools across the country have experienced gun violence, including Sandy Hook and Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. They found that 143 kids, educators, and people have been killed in those assaults, and 289 have been injured. 2018, there were 25 shootings alone, the highest number since 1999. I'm sure we can all agree that beyond the dead and the wounded, the kids who witness that violence or have to cower in the door, on the floor behind those doors, can also be profoundly traumatized. And where did those guns come from? In cases where the source of the gun could be determined, more than 85% of those shooters brought them from their own homes and from neighboring homes, friends and relatives. This group wants to put more of these deadly weapons into the homes of our kids. Given these devastating facts, 
I find it appalling that the boosters would hold a gun raffle to benefit students, especially at a time when students across the nation are lobbying their legislators to get schools better protected, not put more guns. I urge the school board to institute a policy that forbids its boosters to hold fundraisers promoting weapons, tobacco, and alcohol. I saw that another, uh, I think the same organization that you're working with, they're having a cash bash. And they're selling ticks for $50 also, just like the gun ones are. Now I see that there's also some guns involved there, but $50 times 500, that's still $25,000. There are ways to raise money without using weapons. And I encourage you to come up with a policy that would Thank you. Thank you. Right. One more and then our will be up. Randy Dawson from Ambridge. The only thing I would like to comment is on the middle school fact that we've all talked about the problems that are going on with, you know, the metal tech. We do this every day in the high school. We have bag checks. Why can't, why is the middle school any different? Let's institute it at the middle school tomorrow, next week. I'm in the middle school a lot, I volunteer a lot, you know, I'm very active in the school, I'm here to work with you and help you. Let's institute the parents organization that was brought up by Megan. Why can't we do this? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that will end our half hour of public discussion for this meeting. At this point I'll ask for a motion to adjourn the voting session and then we'll reconvene for the meeting this last meeting. Can I have a motion? Second. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The voting meeting is adjourned. The meet and discuss board meeting of the Ambridge Area School District is held on Wednesday, January 19, 2019. The meeting is being held in lieu of the agenda for the regular monthly board meeting that will be held this Wednesday, January 16th at 7 p.m. in the High School Media Center. Uh, we'll dispense with the flag salute as we did that earlier. Videotaping. The purpose of videotaping a meeting is for the public information. The opinions <coughs> expressed by any member of the public do not necessarily reflect the view or opinion of the Ambridge Area School District Board of School Directors and are solely that of the speaker. And the Ambridge Area School District Board of School Directors hereby expressively disclaims any and all responsibility or liability for any false, defamatory, or slanderous statements expressed by the speaker. Any unauthorized rebroadcasting of any video, audio, or still image of the video recording of this meeting is strictly forbidden without the written permission of the Ambridge Area School District Board of School Directors. May I have a roll call, please? Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Kehoe? Yes. Mr. Kowal? Yes. Mrs. Locker? Yes. Mrs. Myland? Yes. Ms. Pettigo? Yes. Mr. Sass? Yes. Mr. Weir? Mr. Angus? Here. Eight members present? Thank you. Is there any correspondence to see you? There is none. Thank you. No recognition this evening? No, sir. Okay. We'll proceed directly to the presentation, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Walters for the middle school update. Thank you, Mr. Angus. This is not very long, um, and it's probably not going to give everyone all the answers that they would like to have this evening, but I said in an email to someone earlier today, I refuse to give up on our kids, our teachers, our administrators, or our community. Uh, I think it's very clear that we have some kids who have great needs. And um, the last thing I want to do is just kick all kids out of school until we're down to, you know, the kids that we like or something. So we have some ideas and we have a lot of good things we're moving toward. And I will address the metal detectors. That's something that's just recently come up. Um, and I'm also going to say I've never been in a school district. There's not been an issue here that I haven't dealt with in every other school district I've been in. So it's not unique to Ambridge. These problems exist in all school districts. I knew this was going to happen. I've been in here a while. <coughs> Sorry about that. So here are some pictures. Sometimes I'm accused of being too positive, but I need everybody to know that it's not all negative in this building. Here are kids in Mr. Ayer's room doing a group project, and here are kids in our media center working with technology. Um, I would remind everyone that this school configuration is four months old. We have 200 additional kids in the building. 400 of whom have never been in that building before. 
So two-thirds of the kids in that building have transitioned to a new facility, new teachers, a whole new environment. Um, they say it takes at least three years to get a middle school up and running solidly. So we're four months in. I beg of you to give us a little more time. Um, the things that we've added, as a reminder, the kids are now getting computer science in 6th and 7th grade, which is coding. They're getting computer applications in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, family consumer science, tech ed, 6th grade band. All of our 6th graders were able to come together at the holiday and pre present a wonderful concert, as opposed to when I went to State Street last year and there were nine kids in the 6th grade band. Um, we had to have advanced classes in sixth grade right now, math and English. Uh, student council has been reestablished. They had a great holiday dance. And the parent-teacher group has been reestablished. Um, here are some more kids' group work and in their computer science class. Programs that we have in, in place right now, we have a student assistance team. We have a teacher that has two periods every day fully devoted to receiving information from teachers. Teachers identify kids that um, are exhibiting a, a drop in grades, a change in behavior, a uh, lack of interest. Parents are contacted. Forms are completed. We bring parents in for meetings. We put plans in place to try to help and support these kids. Um, we have Positive Steps, which is a county program. We have someone in the building full time every day who sees kids and works with kids with the approval of parents. It's kind of a counseling situation. We have a full-time guidance counselor, and we have a part-time social worker. A uh, social worker also addresses attendance issues. There are kids and teachers in the hallway. Um, here are the additional considerations. We have added additional paraprofessional support that helps us with our hall duty, hall monitoring kinds of things. Um, we have some turnover in pairs because, the, quite frankly, they don't make a lot of money, and it's hard to keep good people in those roles. Uh, the people we have right now, I think, are doing a great job, and we just we have one on the board agenda tonight to hire. Um, we have moved uh, Joanne Hoover, who's the State Street principal. She's in the smallest elementary school. She's going to the middle school two afternoons or mornings a week, two half days a week, to do conduct walkthroughs and formal observations. Um, the teachers, number one, need a little more administrative presence in the classrooms. And the teachers also need that academic uh, support as they work to improve instruction throughout the building. She just started that this week. Um, we are talking, and I haven't been able to address this with the board yet, but we would really like to establish two Saturdays a month for Saturday school. It allows us to reduce the number of out-of-school suspensions. Um, it gives the kids a safe place to go on Saturday for a few hours. Uh, we'd probably feed them while they were here. I have principals who volunteered to come in on Saturdays on their own time to do this three or four hours on Saturday. We do one Saturday here and one Saturday up at the middle up at the middle school, so that the kids who couldn't get transportation to um, the middle school could probably walk or get a bus down here. So we would really like to do that, but we have to calculate the cost because we would have to pay teachers. Um, and there would be some uh, additional expenses. Um, we talked briefly in executive session about adding a professional, uh, you know, someone with a, a teaching certificate as a long-term sub second semester to man the in-school suspension room. Right now we have nine teachers and that's their duty. So every period it changes who's in there and then we lose nine nine people who could be helping us doing other things in the building. So those nine people then would be able to do lunch duty, they would be able to roam the halls, they would be able to escort kids to and from classes. Um, that would be a much better use of those nine people in our professional staff and it would just be a, a half year of a long-term sub and it would also provide consistency for those kids that were in school suspension to make sure that they got their work done. Because one teacher every period, you know, you can say, you can put your paper away and say, oh, I got that done. And so um, I think uh, the board is in agreement with that. Um, we'll vote on it next week. We'll get it posted tomorrow, Barry, and we'll start looking for a good, solid um, professional educator to man that. Um, that puts additional adults on duty. 
Uh, next year, we also are going to pro propose advanced science and social studies classes so that um, our kids are not distracted by other things, and we, we, would, we believe we can make it there next year on that one. That would be in the program of studies. Here are some of uh, Brad O'Lennick. Brad Lennox kids out in the lobby. I was there when they were doing this through all kinds of measurement activities. And you guys know you can do all kinds of things measuring with your phones. They had their phones out. Uh, it was a great activity. Um, we have, and I know people say the cameras aren't that big of a deal, but the cameras are a huge deal. And I'm talking to you as a principal in a building with 1,400 kids. If something happens in the restroom, you don't have a camera in the restroom, but you can review that film and find out who it was. And while it doesn't, it, it's after the fact, it prevents things from happening because kids know they're going to get caught. Um, and Tom has monitors in his office now. When kids walk into his office, they're going to see all those places where those cameras are sitting. And the new cameras um, have much better uh, range of vision and they're much more clear so we can adapt with the old cameras we were having a difficult time identifying kids um, and and when you're you know unfortunately when you're disciplining kids to have that video is really helpful so my question is you got these new cameras and we got the email last night how effective was that camera today when that student walked into that building and was walking around that I can't building? discuss that specifically, but I will tell you that that kid was in homeroom and directly back to the office. So whatever kids were hearing, uh, you know, I think sometimes the things that come back to you are a little bit larger than the father was there in 10 minutes. So, you know, th things are going to happen. We're managing a lot of kids. Things are going to happen. I get that. But I also think that we need to be a little bit more proactive instead of a student bring we just did backpack checks on Wednesday, and I apologize, I'm a little upset, and That's I normally okay. don't get You're allowed this. to be your mom. But when a student has a knife in their backpack, anything could have happened right then and there if it wouldn't have fell out of his backpack. And I don't know if that student, you know, had it in there. Was he feeling unsafe because of what happened? And he thought, oh, I'll bring a knife in my backpack. But still, I don't know, but it's a concern for me because I what wish, if he had other issues? I wish I could explain the whole thing, but I can't. I, I, I would eliminate and reduce your fears tenfold if I could talk to you about it, but I can't. And I have one question. I can't. Is there somebody monitoring those cameras all day long? Because I know Mr. McKelvey. He, no, I think he's no, a great of man. of course not. It's, <coughs> that's not realistic. <coughs> that's just not realistic. But they are very helpful. I'm just going to say they're, it's one of the best tools as a principal that I have. Um, another thing that I'm really excited about, our, our new director of special ed, Lee Myford, got with a, a, a anonymous funding, has gotten us professional development through the Watson Institute to do school-wide positive behavior support. The first session is going to be a half a day in January. We don't have a lot of professional development time, um, but we will get this started and strategies will be implemented immediately because I know one of, the, one of the things I hear from parents is, my kid isn't doing everything right and they're not getting reinforced. So that's going to start in January. Um, it will be in full force by the fall because we're going to have to do some work with teachers over the summer. So that's, you know, that one just fell in our laps, and I'm so happy that we have that because that will make a huge difference. Um, all staff will retrain second semester, um, full implementation in the fall. I told you that. There are some projects that were done in, I think, Mrs. Yanessa's class. And there's uh, Mr. Ayer's class, and he actually sent video around of what they were looking at. Somehow they were able to video that, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so what can I do as a parent? I plead with the parents that when you hear something, you're contacting Tom directly. I hear, I get six to eight complaints a day. This happened, that happened. The majority of what you hear, we can respond to in some way, probably by the end of the day. If you're more comfortable CCing me or CCing Mr. King, um, between the two of us, we're probably in that building almost every day. I'm there at least once a week. Mr. King was there this afternoon. 
Um, but we have to be informed, you know, it's, I hear these horrific stories, but I don't know any specifics of these horrific stories. I hear that classrooms are torn up every day. I know of one situation the whole year. Um, so we need more specific information, and that needs to go directly to Tom so that he can investigate <coughs> some of these things. And it, it do, it's not always getting to us. Um, email is the best. You know, to, you can email Tom McKelvey at 11 o'clock Saturday night, and he'll probably respond to you. Like, it's almost sickening. Like 12 o'clock at trail. night, Tom's emailing people. Um, but he get you know, it's on our phones now. We're, he was in Disney World over Christmas with three children and his grandmother in a wheelchair pushing his grandmother around, and he's talking to Barry and I and the chief of police. So he's responsive. He will, he will respond to you. Um, please email us. I mean, you're welcome to call, but email is, you've got it in writing now. You can hold us accountable. Um, talk to your children and tell them to report things directly. If they're comfortable reporting it to a teacher, they can report it to the counselor, they can report it to Michelle Kasmer, um, Kasmer Dean of Students, anybody that they're comfortable with, they can report things. Um, join parent teacher. Kathy Fisher would love to have you on that group. And consider donating money for our Saturday school if we get it up and running so that we can feed these kids. Um, there's the cafeteria that everyone says is out of control. I spent a day in there. Every kid I talked to, they were fine. They were great. It's not perfect, but it, I've been in cafeterias with 450 kids, so you see who's in that picture. Um, what can students do? Report bullying. There's a bully box. Dean of students, any teacher. Help other students when possible in the classroom. Um, I have Michelle and Tom's email addresses up there and get involved and get involved in clubs. I'll have this posted on the website tomorrow so you guys can share it, review it. There's our sixth grade band at homecoming, or our middle school band at homecoming, which is fabulous, that they have an opportunity to do something like that that they haven't had in the past. Um, now, I don't know how long people want to stay here. I can take questions, but Doug also has a brief presentation which is directly connected to this, and I think that this is going to um, this is a statewide uh, adventure that's been directed by the Attorney General's office, and I think maybe you should hear that first. Attorney General in Pennsylvania. 
so the tips will be triaged by the Office of Attorney General. They're going to classify those tips into different categories, whether they consider them to be life-threatening or non-life-threatening. And then they will dispatch those tips out to the school district that they're tied to. If they're a life-threatening tip, let's say they get a tip that someone's going to shoot up in the school. So that would be considered a life-threatening tip. And that would also get dispatched to 911 centers at the same time it gets triaged to the school district crisis team. So the police would be involved. In fact, we're going to be meeting with the police this Friday to talk about how we're going to communicate and how we're going to deal with those types of, of situations. Um, the school team is uh, charged to investigate this, and only the school uh, team, crisis team, can close out the disposition of a tip. So far, uh, we have appointed our, our uh, lead to the Safe to Say crisis team. That would be me. Uh, and then we have four additional members from the administration that are on that team. Uh, Dr. Walter, Mr. King. Um, yeah, Dr. Myford and Josh Jones, who is our uh, certified uh, FEMA uh, person. So he's helping us manage a lot of the technical end of it. Um, we have done a mandatory survey, a questionnaire on uh, things that we have in place already in the district and protocols that we use. Um, we have attended two-hour training sessions for the team members. Uh, we have set up the tip module and the dashboard that's going to be used for our school district. Uh, we have met with the 911 center. Uh, we have ordered promotional materials to start announcing this. And then, we, like I said, we have a meeting scheduled Friday with the local police. And then we'll be developing a training schedule for students and staff. The students only in grades 6 through 12 are mandated to be trained. I believe we're going to make an attempt to train fifth graders as well. Um, so um, it's not really materials that someone at a lower grade level we want to present to them. So probably grades 5 through 12, we're still working on how that's going to be rolled out in the next couple weeks, but plans will be coming soon. Like I said, the, the program is designed to help people recognize the warning signs and threats that may occur in school districts in the community, to take action on it, to take it seriously, and then say something about it, either through the app, through the call, or through the website. It's completely anonymous. So here's an opportunity, if, if your child or someone in the community is, uh, knows of something that's happening and you don't want to be identified, this is a completely anonymous type of service. The only time that anonymity would be broken, if it's like a suicide, someone's threatening to commit suicide, then in those cases, law permits us to get help for that person if we can identify them. <coughs> Again, the steps are three. Um, we, when a tip is submitted, um, that is triaged by the Office of the Attorney General, categorized as life-threatening or non-life-threatening, and then it is sent out either to the school district if it's non-life-threatening, -life if it's life-threatening, then it's sent out to 911 centers as well as the school district. If it is a life-threatening situation, uh, we have been instructed that they will text us, email us, and call us, and they will continue to call us until someone answers the phone. <laughs> so, uh, and we can be called 24-7. So we might get a call at 2 in the morning on a Saturday night, and they will continue to call until one of our crisis team members picks up the phone. Um, so they're taking this very seriously. This program has actually been developed and um, is really being supported by the Sandy Hook Promise Foundation. They developed this program after the tragedy at Sandy Hook, and so they've been the people leading the charge and all the training and all the, the sessions that we've gone to. Doug? Yeah. What's the time lag in, in this scenario you're talking about? For a tip? Yeah. Um, tips okay. come in. Um, we test tipped it. We, did some, we had to do some test tips. We had to spend like 30 minutes at a training session doing test tips. It's um, instantaneous. It's as instantaneous. As soon as I, I went in as a tipster, Doug got it right away. Yeah. I mean, they process that very quickly, and then it comes out to the district almost immediately. Yeah, it's live on Monday. Wow. Yeah, this is so going to go live Monday. The app hasn't been rolled out yet. They didn't want to roll it out until they actually went live. So once the app is there, and then we have a responsibility to train the staff and students. If it's live Monday, when are you thinking we'll get the communication out to the district? Um, we're, they're not mandating that we have to have the training done before the 14th. They're just saying we have to have a plan in place 
by next week, and then we have to communicate, and they want us to do it as quickly as possible. This, we were only trained right before yeah. Christmas, yeah. and we just did a webinar yesterday. Yeah. Um, I, Barry and I have a meeting with the principals Friday. The principals don't even really know about it. We've given them a heads up, but we didn't have any information to give them. So we're meeting with the principals Friday to figure out how quickly they can train the staff because the teachers are going to need to have the app on their phones and understand it, and then we'll get it to the teachers. So I mean, we're going to try to do it in short form, but even for me to get principals together before next Friday is impossible. Yeah, they, they've been very, in the trainings, they've even been very understanding, saying we realize we've rolled this out extremely fast. And they realize that school districts are going to need a little time to get it communicated and train people properly. So we want to make sure we're going to do it right. So we're just starting to look at the training materials um, this week and next week and come up with our plan. Uh, we want to make sure that when we deliver it, it's delivered in a serious manner. The idea is to start to change the culture, to have people start talking about things, uh, to really take things serious. When someone says, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to come in and just stab everyone next week, that they don't blow it off as something that's a casual comment that, that someone doesn't say, okay, well, I'm not going to say anything. Someone else will do something about it. You know, you have to all start being part of the solution. So this is designed to have everyone in the community, the other students, the staff, all be part of the solution. Um, we are a little concerned about the time it's probably going to take to dispose of tips initially. Um, they do talk about the fact that there's going to be a large volume of tips that come in initially when you first train students and staff. but. In the end, I mean, you can read it as well, that the program is supposed to save lives. And so when you look at it in that perspective, we're going to take it from a serious standpoint and say, look, this is about saving kids' lives. Any amount of time is worth it. So um, that's how we're taking the approach. And there again, I'm not going to read them to you, but there's some of the reporting rates that they're talking about. Uh, you know, we could be dealing with hundreds of tips to deal with. but. Like I said, the school district has to be able to communicate well with the different parties that the police are involved, their 911 center is involved. Um, the app is extremely robust. Um, it allows for instant communication back with the tipster anonymously if you have more questions. It also allows for the team members and the 911 centers and the police <coughs> to communicate almost instantaneously about something that's going on. So it's extremely well done application and website. Um, we, we've been through, like I said, several hours of training, and we had some fun playing around with some different things the other day because they were, they were test tips, but uh, very impressed with how quickly it works. They're pretty user-friendly. And again, Sandy Hook Promise has sponsored this, so um, it's been very, very well thought out. They've led the charge, and they've really uh, done a great job in training anyone, everyone across the state. There was some pushback, I think, as there always is with new things, thinking, what are they going to make us do now? Uh, but I, you know, it was pretty clear to us when the Secretary of Education took time to reach out and say, this needs to happen, and, and really impressed upon everyone how important this is. And, and when you look at what the possibilities are and how it can help save kids' lives, it's certainly worth the time and investment to do it. So I don't know if any of has any specific questions. That was a very high level. Uh, overview of it, but if you have questions, I'll try to answer them. But okay, thanks. <coughs> oh yeah, I forgot to talk about the metal detectors. Um, that just came up, so we're looking into it. Scott's already looked at pricing. Um, it's a bit more logistic at at the middle school and and I know people say well they do it up here and if you talk to Mr. King he'll tell you it took him a long time he said initially those kids were lined up all the way to the field house um, the, an issue that we at least we can do it it's just that I can't do it tomorrow um, logistically they have about 30 minutes the, the kids start coming in here quarter till 10 till 7 first bell rings at 25 after at the middle school the buses all end up there at the same time at 715 the teachers get there at 720 and the bell rings at 725 when we did the backpack um, when we did the backpack check we had three tables and we had four people at every table. So we had 12 people checking backpacks. And I had parents sending me pictures of kids standing outside in the dark. 
So you can't win for losing. You're happy that we did the backpack check. Other people were complaining because their kids were standing out. At least it wasn't cold that day. So um, until we get those metal detectors, can we look at doing those backpack checks? Well, we can. And not tell people, let's do it. We can, but the teachers, and our union president is here, voluntarily came in that morning. So I'm either going to have to pay teachers, and I don't even know if I can get that many people to do it voluntarily. They do it up here with six, but they they have it down to a science. Why don't you see about getting the economy police to come do three different entrances? It's before we would definitely their, have to pay. We would definitely have to pay them to like, do that. So listen, I we hear changes. you loud and clear. We will work on solving the problem, but we can't just randomly put a fix on something and have 600 kids standing outside with no supervision. So, I mean, we have to keep, we have to maintain a level of supervision. And while you don't feel that there's supervision, if they're waiting outside for 20 minutes every morning, we're going to have some problems. We had one person out there with them that morning. So we have to figure out logistically, can we drop them off at three different doors? Can we change the busing so that they, they stagger those times? It's just not something that happens instantly with 600 kids. Um, we do have wands. We use the wands randomly that day. Um, we could do intermittent backpack checks, but we have to figure out a better way to do it than all those kids coming through that front door. So, Mr. King, you and I will rendezvous in the morning and have a conversation. When you said random, could you randomly select certain, not, we, we not can, certain kids, but just grab a couple kids? We absolutely can do that, but I still need step. The teachers arrive at 720. But at least that way it wouldn't be like 600 kids. Exactly. But I still need people that are going to volunteer to do this. Right. Right. and do it consistently, and that is not a conversation I've had yet. And I'm just going to say, I, I would think that the teachers would be on board and doing this, and they should be, and I'm, I'm sorry, I support the teachers, but as if you're doing backpack checks, that's not a, only helping to provide safety for the students, but it's also helping to provide safety for you. So I would think as a professional, they would want to help out and be there. I know that's not their job, however, Yes, we should be looking at economy police or some sign of security. However, it provides a little bit more sense of security for people. And even as a teacher, that is there for you too. So I would think as a professional, you'd want to help out a little bit and step up. Sorry. And I support teachers, and everybody knows that. Sorry. All right. Any other questions regarding the presentations? Yes, sir. Yeah, there's one day source officer down at the middle school, is that right? Has there been any thought put into a second one? You put all the money into these new camera upgrades. If he has to go to one place because he's seeing something on there and something else happens, where, where is somebody going to be to address that other issue? Oh, yeah. He can call back up if he needs it. And honestly, it's. But I don't want it to become knows. a police state, it's a school. Right. And and yeah. I don't want kids to feel like they're walking into a place where police have to roam around. We we don't have maybe that's what they need. Well, you not know, a lot of people's backpacks, and you have people saying they're going to shoot up the school. I'd rather have nobody the said they're going to shoot up the school. If I can help defend you guys, the high school Thank only you. has <laughs> we only have one resource officer here, and nothing tremendous happens here and I mean if a fight if a fight hap if we've had fights here they've been broken up like that and we only have the one officer so I mean I get what you're saying about adding another officer but like I, we only have one here so to add another to the middle school like Mrs. or like Dr. Alter said it would be like walking into like a police state. So again with the metal detectors you have here and the resource officer everything's covered. What I'm saying is you don't have metal detectors at the middle school and you only have one resource officer and you have all this influx of additional students like your program up there said that you're trying to handle with limited resources with the teachers. So and whether they said they were going to shoot up the school or bring a gun to school, whatever the quote wording of it was, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of protection being proactively put in place besides the town. 
and update the campus. Maybe I can I, I can help to clarify. Um, obviously, I'm not a politically correct person, so you just have to excuse me if what I say is not politically correct. It, it is who I am. Do not confuse student discipline with student safety. They are two very distinct and different aspects. In regard to the middle school and student discipline, the concept of the middle school was put in four <coughs> months ago. And there are, there's a bit of a learning curve associated with that. You have a number of different factors that are implicating what we think is a disciplinary problem that we're trying to address from a board standpoint through the administration. One is you have sixth grade teachers that come out of an elementary school environment, which is a very, very different environment than it is in a almost capacity filled middle school. And those teachers have not yet adjusted to that new paradigm. The second is you have 400 to 600 kids that are in a brand new school environment and they don't necessarily yet know how to act within the constraints of a very busy building where the hallways are crowded and you get pushed or tripped or you hear something that you think is inappropriate because an eighth grader said it to a sixth grader. We put a new principal up there who is spending almost 70 percent, I'm going to guess, of his time right now in disciplinary matters, which for the most part deal with children that are individual education programs. IEP, right? So, so you hear the term IEP, it means somebody that from a mainstream standpoint we have to take out of the mainstream and we have to address their educational needs on an individual basis. And to address that we've had to put a new special education director in place to try to get programs that conform to the IEP. Now, anytime you try something, there is an influx at the beginning and then over time it trails down as you address the various problems. There are still challenges at the middle school, but they pale in comparison to most other districts within Beaver County. If you go up and spend time at the middle school or come down to the high school, you don't have daily fights, you don't have kids throwing books around, um, you know, and, and, and creating uh, chaos. You, you can ask, the, the, you know, the, the football gentleman, very well spoken, by the way. Thank you. Very well. Um, in terms of the environment, I have two kids that come in through the, the whole district. They're going to tell me if something was going on. They're not coming home. What they do come and tell me is <coughs> they would like that the, the discipline um, results be evenly allocated. So if you get in a fight with somebody and it's your fault, they want that person to understand you're going to get three days suspension, you're going to get ten days suspension, and, and you can understand that everybody's going to be treated the same way. All right? I still don't think that the transition into the middle school is fully established and the board has fully supported a change in staffing to accommodate that. That change in staffing may be temporary, it may be semi-permanent. It might be an assistant principal, it might be a detention dedicated individual, though you've heard them called a sub, basically what it is is one teacher in a room and therefore when you have a disruptive child you can immediately send them to the room and they've been removed from the mainstream education. That's the kid that's rattling on the, the door, right? The kid that's sitting out in the hallway screaming bloody murder. So, in terms of student discipline, I'm thinking, okay, you have student discipline problem the older you get in school, right? So I have sixth grade teachers coming into a middle school environment, yet there was a woman that said, I got a problem at, at Economy Elementary School. By the way, Economy Elementary School is by far our highest academically achieving school, and on an aggregate basis has the, the most affluent and well-educated parents as a general consensus. So, you put any children into a 500 or a 600 populated building, you're going to have instances, and the idea is to work in a common disciplinary program for all that. And I think the school district is trying to do that. Have they succeeded in the four months? No, but have they continued to try every week upon every week upon every week? I think they have. And I think as a board, we've supported 
adding additional staff into that building temporarily, semi-permanently, permanently to find a resolution. That's student discipline. And I think sometimes it whirls upon itself. Because I'm on the board, I have the luxury of sometimes seeing the number of incidents of children that are suspended. First of all, the school board supports suspension, and the administration has used that tool adequately to deal with many of the problems. However, those school suspensions aren't in the hundreds. They're in the tens. So don't believe because you hear some of the hype and, and, and the whirling dervishness of many people's comments that we have an educational environment that is contrary. It, it is not. As it relates to security, which is a completely different issue, we are now in an environment that is super sensitive to almost everything that is associated with safety because of the multiple gun uh, shootings in, in uh, movie theaters and schools and, and, and other public institutions. And our role as a school district is to find a balance between trying to create adequate school, school security within the financial means that we are capable of achieving reasonably. <coughs> it started at the high school, we put in metal detectors, we put in slash cards for the teachers, we changed locks, we have monitoring systems in place. That seems to have worked fairly well. The Ambridge Junior High was built in 1961. And to my knowledge, since 1961 or 1962, I haven't heard a lot of incidents about a child bringing a knife into school in the past 55 or 60 years. You also haven't had this many in there. That's not true. In actuality, we have. We've actually had more in the building yes. than we do now. So, as a school district, I understand from a board standpoint that we have to create public safety, but I think it's a step in evaluation process. So, the, the idea of putting cameras in is not one of controlling school safety, but it's is identifying a threat in many cases. We have resource officers, which is a fancy word for a police officer in every school except Highland. And the only reason we don't have a police officer in Highland is because Harmony Township won't pay for a portion of that police officer, which they could use to cover vacations of their other police officers in the summertime. We have an Ambridge police officer in, in the high school. We have a Bain police officer in State Street. We have an economy police officer in the junior high. And we have nothing in Highland because of the township in which it resides in, not because of our unwillingness as a school district. That's, that police officer, by the way, is armed. And that's never come up in discussion of should we or should we not arm a resource officer. That police officer has always been armed since their inception into the schools. So do we think that there are additional steps that have to be taken from a security standpoint? And, and what we mean, right, don't, don't, don't confuse it with student discipline is do we think additional steps in the middle school may have to go into effect? Yes, they may. But it's not because um, historically they've been overlooked. Historically, the environment hasn't needed it. And only now with the super sensitivity of the environment in which we all operate, right, in which we all look. You know, should I not go get gas at the AM, PM because somebody got shot? You know, there's a relative reasonableness to what you will try to attempt to do to, to spend the, the least amount of money for the best return. Now, if that means we're going to then go and, and decide to put metal detectors into the middle school, you know, two things happen. One is I get a father or a mother that comes into the board because nobody comes to a board meeting to say, a boy, school district, you're doing a great job. Right? Right? But you only did so after you ripped us a new rear end. Right? You ripped us a new rear end and said, that a boy! Right? Okay? Now, people come to the school board meeting because they are unhappy with something that's going on and they want change. And, and, and as an elected board, right, that gets paid nothing, you volunteered to do it, our role is to try to, to listen to what the constituents say but also understand what the administration is capable of doing in a reasonable period of time. So will the school district look to additional security me measures up in the middle school? I think we have and I think we will continue to. There are logistical challenges associated with th some things that now people that never thought of putting a metal detector in a middle school 
now say, which is, I want it immediately. Me too. But I can't have 600 kids standing outside on First Street, right, until we can figure out the logistics associated with is that the best answer, or the multiple uh, entrances the best answer. Are teachers going to volunteer to look at backpacks? And I'd like to say they, they, they would, but from a union representation standpoint, I have a funny feeling that that may not probably be as easy as you might suggest. So there are costs associated with any decision. And all the board is trying to do is reconcile those two things. The best safety we can provide to all the buildings within the reasonable cost of what we economically have from uh, a wherewithal standpoint. So I, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to sort of voice my opinion. Thank you. Of course you, oh, sorry, were you of course you stole my thunder because I was going to say a lot of that. I'm Jennifer and I live in economy. I think part of the issue here is because I've been hearing a lot about how much experience a lot of people have and they've been doing this for a very long time. Um, we live in a different time now and I think that's part of the issue. Social media is a fabulous thing, but it's scaring the crap out of our kids and that's part of the issue. Um, I have a seventh grader sitting over there that won't come talk, but she will, she will probably say, Part of the issue that I think maybe we could help with, because I think you are on the right track. I think a lot of great things are happening. I'm in constant contact at the junior high all the time because I have a kid who's very nervous, lots of anxiety, really scared about the things that are happening. Also did not want to go to school on Wednesday. I had to force her. Um, and it was okay. I think if we could try to um, involve the parents more. I love the meetings we had early on in the year. I think we need to have them keep going. But I think we need to involve the kids more. They feel like they're not being heard. When you say it's not a police state at junior high, we know that. The kids feel like it is. Assigned seats at lunch, you know, just all the stuff for the kids that maybe aren't the problem. Because there is a definite difference between discipline and safety. Um, and managing both is very difficult. And the lines get blurred there, I think, as well. Um, if there's a way, and I suggested this in an email recently, too, to involve the kids to hear what their real issues are. Um, a lot of these kids, and I know mine's going to be one of them, is not going to go to one specific person during the day at the middle school when she has a problem. You know, there's, there's, we're providing that to the kids. A, she doesn't have time. She barely has time to get to her classes. But there's maybe a little bit of an embarrassment issue or, you know, uh, feeling um, uh, people are going to know that she's having it, whatever the case may be. So there's got to be another avenue for them to express their fears. Um, and also their, their suggestions of maybe what, what they need, what they want, um, and maybe there's some things that we can do to help these kids feel better about where they are uh, and make them um, aspire to, to be better to each other. I think we're losing respect from a very early age. We just heard about second grade. Discipline maybe is lacking from very early. It's not just all of a sudden happening at the middle school. It's starting way earlier. And I think if there's, it sounds like we're implementing some positive steps, positive programs, let's start them earlier to respect each other and to, you know, I tell my kids every day, be the reason that somebody smiles today. Um, I know not every household says that and sends their kids to school like that. But if we can reinforce it at school, there's got to be ways to do that. Um, the Saturday school thing, I'm really sorry, but I can't give you my, I don't have a Saturday to give you. Come so, on. Uh, I, are you kidding? I'm up here as it is all the time, and I don't have that Saturday. It seems to me that we do need more personnel, whether it's just at the middle school or other places. You're bringing a, a Highland principal up, you're, all these things. It's clear we need more staff, whether it's for the lunchroom, whether it's for the hallways, or whatever teacher might need it until they get acclimated to the new system. We need to put money there. We need to have more bodies there so that the kids see it, because they are going to see more bodies means more help. They're going to feel safer, whatever the case is. I think we maybe need to think about putting more money to that than maybe some other things. So that's just my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But I want to end on a positive note because with your whole idea of it starts earlier, and I don't mean to embarrass two wonderful people in the front row, but Lisa Fox and Michelle Wilson are teachers at Highland, and Lisa Fox, as a kindergarten teacher, is involved in this A2I 
uh, reading program where they teach the kids how to work in stations and they're meeting kids where they are and they're differentiating all these stations. In the beginning, they were all overwhelmed. They didn't know how they could possibly prepare. Um, the pre and I've seen both of these in action and they've got 24 kids in their classroom all working independently on activities that are at their level. It's diminishing the behavior issues. I'm not saying getting rid of them completely, um, but their principal emailed me yesterday and said a fourth grade teacher came to her and said, when I do stations, and this is completely voluntary at two, three, four, and five. Michelle's doing this voluntarily, taking on all this extra work. When we're in the stations, the kids are not leaving the room to go to the restroom, and I have no behavior problems. And they're working together. So I'm, I'm kind of a visionary. I know that they're in kindergarten. I might not be here when they get to sixth grade, but we're teaching them to be successful and understand how to learn when they're babies, when they're five years old. Um, and it's definitely having an impact um, not only on the kids but on these teachers because I've, they've just been so excited about it. So it's my last positive thing. All right, we'll move forward on the public comment regarding the agenda items only. The meet and discuss meetings are open to the public. At this time, district residents may come forward to comment or ask questions on any agenda item only. Each person must state their first and last name and address prior to speaking. Each person will be allowed three minutes and we speak only once during this half hour period. There will be no discussion during this time, but any board member or administrator desiring to address questions or concerns may do so at the conclusion of the committee reports. So our first committee will be Education and Technology. <coughs> Sorry, that's Don't mind me. Just racing right through there. Relax. Relax. I just want to say to Dr. Welter, I'm one of the, uh, and this this isn't public comment, okay? This is a personal comment. I'm in the Bridger Reader program, and I participate in the A21 program with uh, Dana Burns in first grade. And the stations that we've implemented, because I work the stations as well when I go, has been really good. And it's perfect to teach differentiated instruction. And never have had a disciplinary problem in that class, and I've been doing it now for years. But since you started this, it's really been a transformative thing. So I keep can it take up. no credit. These people in class are really Yeah, well, I know that you it's, it's a great program. I had a question for the uh, Mrs. Booster person Jesus. as to how much money you actually raise in a year for football and cheer. This is our first year. The last boosters, when they left, they left us $6,000 to the negative. Okay. So we were playing catch up all year long. Uh, through the year, through the eight, the eight uh, fundraisers that we did raise, we're lucky if we raised four thousand. Okay. The rest of that came out of our parents' pockets. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so I want to talk about the policy 915, the booster organization, um, Mary Jo. The first reading. How many readings are you going to have? There are usually um, three readings on a policy. I will let you know that um, I am going to make a suggestion to table that um, tonight because if we, there's some further evaluation I would like to look at. <coughs> a lot of further evaluation. Anyway, so that's good. The first reading will be where the, the public can read. Yes. Huh? Yes. Yeah, it, it, it'll be. No, but where? Post it on the website? Yeah, or we post yeah, it on the website. Okay, so we can find it there and we can comment further next week. If we get it back, if we get it back, yeah, next week. Because it says meet and discuss, so then next week you were going to vote. <coughs> I understand that, but I, I also just told you that okay, so I want to table, table that because we're there, discuss there's this some more because I really think we do need to discuss this a lot. Not only from a gun bash standpoint, but other contributions that come to the athletic department, okay? Do you agree with that? <clears throat> That's 
I said, it, it okay. was, I was So with $4,000 from these people right here that they contribute or want to contribute, and basically it's in kind, I guess, from the way she was explaining it, food and transportation. Does any of that money that you receive from any booster organization go to other things like uniforms or that equipment? Money. Huh? They do None of that money comes so to the they just buy they just they they subs from the right. subway and give right. it to those kids. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that being the case, and they raised four thousand dollars. The, um, they didn't raise four thousand dollars. It just paid off last year. So if you listen to what she said, I did. She, they were the six thousand dollars in the hole. They raised four grand, so there's still two thousand dollars in the hole. I understand that. So hopefully the gun bash here is going to raise a whole hell of a lot more money, right? Twenty-five grand. Mm, okay. Well, I would like to ask you a question since you've been standing up here. I would like to know the people that are opposing this fundraiser. I'm not saying whether or not I approve of it or not, but my question is, what have you done to assist this boosters organization with making it easier for them to provide these things that she's outlined for their students? Well, we've given her 93 suggestions on fundraisers. That's number one. I read we did We didn't find out about this until mid-December when there was a post on Ambridge Connection. That's what set the spark off, okay? So, yeah, we'd be happy to help them, assist them, really in any way that doesn't involve guns, because we don't need any more guns on the street, especially in this district. But I'm coming back to the policy of the booster organizations, which we're going to read and we'll be commenting about it. But just say it was a $4,000 that they raised and they want to commit to this. What is the athletic budget for football and cheer? You're, 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 you're down way far the wrong path. Yeah. Let me help. All right? Help me, Jim. Uh, only to, to come like this and bring in like this, right? The school allocates a certain amount of money budgetarily to given sports. It can be uh, a coach's salary, it can be a rotation of uniforms, it can be soccer balls, it can be volleyball nets, whatever. And over a period of time, uh, each annual budget has a certain component of it that is approved expenditures. Black line, full stop. Many of our sports have independent booster organizations. Let me speak about um, the soccer organization, because my daughter's played soccer. That boosters organization is made up of parents, typically, to which their son or daughter participate in a specific sport. It is unaffiliated with the school district. It's not permitted to use the school district's name. It's not permitted to use the school district's logo. It's not even permitted to use pictures of the kids in school because that is an existing policy. They that did use the logo of the school district in their gun bash ad. I understand that there is a policy and why this policy was pulled is we believe there's a policy that regulates the use of school images, of school logos, of affiliations with the school district to an organization that is not overseen by that school district. A 501c3, which is a fancy name for a nonprofit, is not affiliated with the school district. Now, there are a number of you, all of whom decided to send me an email in a three-day period, and I responded to each of them. <coughs> You have expressed an opinion that you find the gun bash distasteful, that it's a threat. And my response is, it may be. But for your opinion, there is another opinion that happened to be the woman in the front row that says, we did it responsibly, and we think we're fine, and we think we've done the best job we can do to it. Ultimately, at the end of the day, and you may not accept this opinion, it's none of your freaking business as a school district. You want to police it, then you deal with the entity or the organization to which you find exception. We as a school district don't have a legal boundary to come back and say, we find that distasteful. We had this exact same discussion when candidate Trump wanted to rent the field house. It was the identical same discussion. 
And the result of that discussion from the board was, we don't pick sides. Ours is one of, do you follow the policies of the school district? And if you follow the policies of the school district, we're going to make the facilities available for your use. Whether you love Trump or you hated Trump, and by the way, there was nobody in between that we were able to find, okay? We looked for them. We couldn't find them. The answer from the board was, don't care. Not our, not our bailiwick. And, and as distasteful as you may find the gun fast, all I'm saying is, it ain't our bailiwick. Because if indeed it was, it was so vehemently opposed, they wouldn't make $25,000 because nobody would participate in their gun bash. So I have to then believe that there's a whole group of people out there that say, this is perfect. I'm going to give money to the boosters and I potentially can win an AR-15 and I'm going to go, you know, pluck off birds or baby or baby or whatever it is. Oh, yeah. Sure. So all I'm saying is I understand. me. I understand how all of you are so vocal about uh, about your desire that you, you find that the innuendo that a gun bash is not appropriate in an educational environment. And by the way, I happen to agree with that. I just don't necessarily agree that we as a school board or school district have the ability to police it. It's not our role. I think that you still have the ability to say to them, look, we find this abhorrent, we censure you, and... That's an opinion, and it's not an opinion that the board should express to a third-party organization. Right. Well, That's not policy. our role. Then put a policy in place that doesn't allow them to use. Why would you, if there were a gun, if there were a shooting here in this building, I think your opinion would be different. I, I don't think my opinion would be different at all. Oh, I, and, 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 and it's not because I agree or I disagree with gun violence. All I'm saying is that it is not the role of a elected board or an administration of a school district to try to influence their opinion and that's exactly what it is it's an opinion if it was fact the second amendment evidently wouldn't agree right but your kids if, are if the federal government us. can't stop gun violence through legislation how do you expect the school board to come in and, and try to legislate a policy to create that same level of safety other it's not going to happen it. other school districts do it why can't ambridge do it they do not and, and, and I would, and, and you all are very good with research. I would love to see a school policy other than the limitation of uh, the use of logos, the affiliation directly with the school, that prohibits what you're asking to prohibit. Because from what we've been advised, it is against the law to do that. And the last thing I really want as a school board is have the ACLU stand here with a $75,000 lawsuit, of which we don't have $75,000 to pay, to try and justify what I actually don't feel needs to be justified. If you have a beef with the organization, go to the organization. You don't like the soccer boosters raising money because we used an example, a, a gentleman's club, then go to the you know, soccer boosters and say, we don't think you should have a gentleman's club uh, fundraiser. If you have a problem with the gun bash, that you, you can choose not to support the gun bash or not to support those boosters, and they will seek some other financial remedy. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where the money goes. Ultimately, as a 501c3, everything they take in in one hand, they have to disperse in the other hand net of some reasonable administrative cost. And all those monies go to the kids. They go for, they go for warm up jackets, they go for hoagies, they go for plaques at the end of the year. They go for some small scholarships in many cases that the boosters give out, but it is not affiliated with the school district. And I do think that that's something really important. We never see their money, ever. We don't see their budget. We don't see what money they take in. We don't see what money has been dispersed. We have no idea any